Jeanne Paquin was born Jeanne-Marie Charlotte Beckers in 1869, to a physician father. She was one of five children. When she was a young teenager, she trained at a dressmaker on Boulevard Haussmann, where she quickly rose through the ranks to become in charge of the atelier. Even early on, she displayed an eye for fashion, being a talented dressmaker, as well as having good management skills. In 1891, she married Isidore René Jacob, who owned a couture house called Paquin Lalaine et C., originally a menswear shop. Jeanne's entrepreneurial skill set would be revealed when she started to work with her husband on the now renamed couture house Paquin. While Isidore was in charge of business operations, and Jeanne focused on designing and creating clothes, she had a vision for the business too. Shortly after becoming part of the business, together with her husband, they opened their first boutique under the name Paquin, rebranded and renamed, next to the already famed House of Worth, en rue de la Paix. Jeanne focused on pastel colors initially, and eventually introduced black as a color in her haute couture collections. This was unusual for the time, because black was only worn during mourning. Just like Worth, and other fashion entrepreneurs of that age, she also knew the importance of using celebrities in order to gain publicity, and grow the popularity of her business. She was the first couturier to send models dressed in her apparel to public events, such as operas and horse races for publicity. She also collaborated with illustrators and architects, as well as working with the theatre, at a time when other fashion entrepreneurs did not yet do so. She had an entrepreneurial instinct, and the New York Times described her in 1913 as the most commercial artist alive. Jeanne also was revolutionary in the way she internationalized her business. Paris was indeed a cosmopolitan city, but she recognized the importance of expanding and growing her business abroad. She opened boutiques in London, which employed the young Madeleine Viennet at one point, New York, Buenos Aires, and Madrid. Jeanne Paquin was known for her modern and innovative style. Alongside Charles Worth, she is considered to be one of the pioneers of the modern fashion business. She was a visionary in the way she conducted and ran her business. On one occasion, she took her clothes on an exhibition tour around the world, charging money for visitors to just view them. She collaborated with and was a member of the Couture Institutions in Paris, and recognized the importance of fashion media, securing exclusive deals to provide leading fashion magazines with her illustrations. Jeanne Paquin was a pioneer in the industry, considered the queen of haute couture. She was the first woman dressmaker to be awarded the Legion d'honneur. Despite her many achievements and innovations to fashion in the early 20th century, Paquin is consistently overshadowed by the great male designers of the time, Frederick Charles Worth and Paul Poiret. Some historians speculate this is because she was a woman, while others like historian, Valerie Steele believe it was her tendency towards moderation that caused her to be overlooked. She made clothing, that appealed to a larger group of customers, getting the attention of the New York Times in 1913, she maintains the attitude of an artist but we know she is the most commercial artist alive. Though she may have been considered moderate, she updated styles for practical reasons, and made high fashion functional for the more common customer, believed historian Diana de Marley. Poiret's hobble skirt was controversial, whereas Paquin's rendition had hidden pleats, giving it more ease of movement. She differed from other designers because she was inspired by women in the street, as she says. She wanted to design for more types of customers and respond to what her customers wanted, rather than just dictate trends and stubbornly push exotic styles. Though she was not as wild as Poiret, 
she did have her own flair. She enjoyed the use of color in her designs, combining contrasting colors and fabrics to create designs that went from ordinary to extraordinary with combinations that set her apart from other designers. She excelled in combining silk or chiffon with fur on her evening gowns. With innovative business practices that are more common today than they were at the time, the Paquin House set an example in the fashion industry. The prices were also more reasonable than her competitors, expanding her customer base even further. At its height they employed around 2,700 people in their four locations, which is larger than even the House of Worth at the time. Not just known for its size, the Paquin House was known for its attitude towards the people they hired. Unlike their fellow couturiers, they sympathized with employees threatening to go on strike in the fashion industry in 1917. They also purchased a villa where their employees could relax. They were not just open-minded with their employees, but also their customers. They did not limit who could shop there in the way many other couture houses did. From the first this clever and ornamental young couple followed a new system. No haughty seclusion, no barred doors, at the Maison Paquin. Paquin was able to make a major impact at the time due to her husband as well as her own success. She was known to have been worth 4 million francs and was considered in the top rank of the Grandes Maison. Paquin's contributions in the areas of business, public persona, art, and design, firmly establish her place in fashion history as the first great woman couturier. This was a major accomplishment for the time, considering she was a woman. It may be more common for women to run companies today, but in Paquin's time she a was a pioneer and a reflection of the strength women had begun to recognize in themselves during this period. Jeanne Paquin was the first woman to become an icon in fashion, establishing the precedent for Chanel and many other designers to follow. She created fairy tale like designs that captivated customers who wanted the same glamorous image her brand portrayed. She was unique in her use of contrasting fabrics like chiffon and fur, as well as her contrasting colors like pink and black. She created her signature pink-red color and was known for her love of colors and bold use of fur. A designer very well known for this today is Alexander McQueen. When looking at his most recent fall collections, fall 2011, 2012 as well as his 2006 collections, it is hard not to notice the similarities between their use of fabric, color and empire silhouette. She was also skilled in creating a design that consisted of two different tailoring styles. Her day to evening dresses, for example, combined suit tailoring with soft draping creating a look that was versatile. Health and Home magazine, October 1912, simple yet smart gowns, which are the very thing for golfing or motoring and yet will not disgrace their wearer should she elect to lunch at a fashionable restaurant in the meantime. Her styles for the more active woman predated Chanel's, making her a pioneer in fit and ease of movement before anyone else. Paquin stated, Fashion should never be allowed to triumph over function, though what was considered functional in the 1900s is not at all what we consider functional today. Paquin's strong will and perseverance are what have also set the precedent for other designers. The fashion world is full of copiers, but Paquin worked very hard to protect her designs, even winning legal battles including one against Beer Couture House, where she was awarded 8,000 francs in damages. She had a full fashion house, which included everything from couture and fur to accessories and lingerie. Her house set the precedent for lifestyle brands, including Lonven in 1915. She inspired many designers, including designer Maggie Roof who said, 
I can still hear the crystal voice of Madame Paquin saying that fashion must constantly renew itself, without weakness or fear, even with audacity. Paquin is still inspiring major designers and average women alike. Despite being retired for nearly a century, Paquin has a modern following online. Paquin's legacy will remain to be filled with class and excellence, which will never be forgotten on the fashion world. Thanks for watching. Sign up to discover fashion stories that deepen your understanding of this world. Your Valerie.